Greetings, this is Daniel Ta from Placemaker, and I'm going to do a tutorial showing some SketchUp tools and tricks to build up a city block. We're going to use Placemaker as a base to create our city, and then we're going to add all sorts of different buildings and tool and trees and different items to it as well. And we're going to use some of the buildings that come with Placemaker from the building bundle to actually detail out the street. So let's get started. Using the SketchUp location tool seen here, I imported in a base aerial of the city of Atlanta. I'm going to click on this aerial and I'm going to go over to the Placemaker dialog window over here on the left and I'm going to use the Make Places button to import in all the items you see below. Roads, the paths, the buildings, the water, the trees, everything with the imagery. So once I have that, I'm going to select Make Place you can see the hourglass indicates that it's being imported. If you see an exclamation point like that, it means the data wasn't available. The buildings are imported here, and I'm going to pause the recording because it's going to take a minute for the import to finish, and then we'll pick it back up. So Placemaker was able to import in all the different items, the buildings, the roads, the paths. There was no water or trees, and this process can take a couple of minutes to import in. But now we have this nice base information. And I want to modify one of the locations here. We're going to modify the roads and add some buildings and some other urban amenities to it. The first thing you can notice, everything on layer, Placemaker, is on a layer. And you can toggle them on off and on. So I turn the buildings off. Can, I can turn off the paths. You can see them toggling on and off. The same with the roads. Imagery is placed on the imagery layer which is not we didn't import that in and then there's also an image on the location snapshot so now we have the roads that you can see here that we can modify everything in placemaker that's imported can be edited or modified so this building can be scaled it can be adjusted whatever i need to do to it i can go into the group i can modify it by push pulling i can use the offset tool and add additional massing to it for example so everything that Placemaker has can be edited. But I want to select these roads. I need to turn the location snapshot off, and that makes it easier for me to actually select the geometry for the road. I'm going to start by going over a quick tip that I used when I'm modeling in SketchUp. I have the SketchUp Preferences window open. Shortcuts are selected on the left-hand side. And under Filter, I'm going to type in Hide. And one of the options here is, is View Component, Edit, Hide Rest of Model, and I've assigned Control F for that as a shortcut. So anytime I do Control F, it'll toggle the visibility of the model. And what that means is when you're working within components and groups, if you do Control F, the rest of the model that's not in that component or that group will be hidden, which makes selecting and modifying and working in SketchUp, especially when you have detailed models, a lot simpler. So here I'm going to pull out and you can see I'm actually in the roads group. So you can see the roads are very clear. I hit control F and that's toggling the visibility of the buildings and other objects. So using this is a great shortcut. If you want to learn more about shortcuts, there's a URL at the bottom of the screen now. You have to type it. I'm sorry about that. But you can go there and go to that blog and read about how to set shortcuts in SketchUp. I want to modify the road geometry here. I'm going to take the line tool. I'm in the roads group and I'm going to draw a line from endpoint to endpoint on this first side. I'm going to go to the second side and do the same thing to just subdivide the geometry of the surface of the road. You can see I select it. Here's another tip though. I'm going to select the material for the road here in the materials menu and I'm going to make it lighter because it makes it easier to see that you're subdividing and working in this geometry versus when it's so dark. So here I selected it, material menu, I hit edit, and I just move the light value over. You could see it lightened all the roads in the model. And now it's easier to subdivide. So in the next section, we're gonna add a center line. We're gonna fill in the spaces all around here and add every all the other streetscape details. Here's another link at the bottom if you want to learn more about trays and different menus in SketchUp, which is what I'm talking about here. I'm putting my cursor over these 
top menus that are already existing and I'm going to right click over them. And what that provides is a list of all the different menus and toolbars in SketchUp, including extensions. And I'm looking for one in particular, the large tool set. I want to keep that open, even though I like using shortcuts, but we're going to use it to highlight some of the tools as I use them. So the first thing I'm going to do is the offset tool. And I want to offset the surface I have selected here to create a center line. It's pretty simple. The surface is selected. Take the offset tool and then just bring it in. I'm going to approximate the size or width of the distance here for the center line. I can always adjust it later using the same method. But it subdivided the surface and it gave me a center line pretty much down the middle of this road. I'm going to go to the materials menu. I'm going to go select one color here and then place it in there and you can see that it filled it in. But when you zoom out, you could see that the line is dark and black because SketchUp is condensing the line visually. So I'm going to take the eraser tool, shortcuts E. I'm going to hold the shift key down. Again, hold the shift key down and then drag the mouse over the lines. And what it's going to do is highlight them and it doesn't erase the lines, it just made them hidden. And there's a way to unhide lines and if you do view at the top left and hidden geometry, you can see the dashes of the hidden lines that we're hiding. But it's a great way to clean up the model. I'm actually going to adjust the color here to make this a little bit brighter and we're good to go. Placemaker was designed to build site plans very quickly. So you could see I'm in the roads group again and I've added a surface here. And I'm going to do that to all the different surfaces around here. I'm going to take the line tool and I'm just going to draw a line across that surface and it's going to fill it in. Because again, that's how we designed Placemaker to fill in these voids. Just fill in the gaps, so to speak. And it gives us the options to start modeling on these surfaces to add a lot more detail beyond just what we did with the center line, but now being able to use the offset tool to really kind of sculpt the ground plane or the streetscape and give us the also locations to add buildings and vegetation and other items. So we're going to start doing that next. I'm going to select the surface here and use the offset tool. Oh, is the shortcut I'm using. We're going to offset it inward. We're going to do it six inches to create a curb. I'm going to select it again and then offset it eight feet. I'm going to select the surface again and I'm going to offset it one more time about 20 feet. Offset. This is the beginnings of my curb, my sidewalk or tree lawn and sidewalk planting areas, different types of zones. I'm going to go to the other side and try it again. Select the surface, take the offset tool. And sometimes the offset tool might jump on you, might not work right, it gets a little finicky in the selection process. Just hit the spacebar or escape or undo and be patient with it. But then here, I'll finally get it at six inches and then select the surface again. We're going to offset that five feet. And then I'm going to select it the other surface another 12 feet over. And I'm going to go and take the material menu. I'm going to add some colors. I like using just the basic color options since I do a lot of rendering and swap out textures anyway. But I'll color the curb here on both sides. I'm going to go add a tree lawn. So I'll go to the landscape menu and select the tree lawns on either side. And of course, I designated those distances and what they are. And then we're going to go in and add some concrete there for the walks and another gray color for where the building pads are. You can see some slivers like this in the geometry. I'm going to start cleaning up this model as I go along. Subdivided the surfaces, but we have the makings of the streetscape in front of us and we're going to go add some more detail to this next. I added some detail to this model. You could see there's a crosswalk that I added. Didn't take very long to do. That'll be a tutorial for another time. But just to show you can further modify the geometry for the site plan that you have here. So I'm going to import some buildings into Placemaker. And these are buildings that when you purchase Placemaker, you receive a coupon code where you can download this building bundle of components. And there's a 
ton of different buildings in here. There's different types. There's textures buildings. There's white massing buildings of all different types. And I have the window open here where the files are located. And I just like to select them, click them, and just drop them into SketchUp. It's a really simple way of doing. It's a quick way to populate this location with a couple of different types of buildings. And they all come with Placemaker again when you purchase Placemaker. So it's about 300 buildings in this library and we hope to add to it in the future. And just gonna place them in here. You can adjust, modify, edit these buildings any way you need to. The other thing is if you purchase Placemaker, it also comes with 15 hours of tutorial videos at danieltal.com uh, on SketchUp. And also another component library of objects, trees, and amenities that you can download once you sign up for free at danieltal.com. But that comes with your placemaker purchase. So I have enough buildings placed in here. And I'm going to add an interesting one. I don't think we're going to use this, but just to show it in here. And I turned the buildings back on doing Control F to unhide the rest of the model. And we're going to further modify these buildings to fit within that city block parcel. So I sped up the video to just show the building placement real quickly. The buildings I imported, I'm scaling them, rotating them. And you can definitely scale the buildings. Their building heights and ratios can be adjusted between 8 foot to 11 or 12 feet per floor plan. Same for their sizes. They're really just white conceptual massings anyway. I'm measuring there to show you how the height. I'm using the move tool to select the components and rotate them. Then I'm placing them also with the rotation tool. So just quickly going around using the move tool there and modifying it. Here, there's something I'm using called Fredo scale. So some of these buildings, their axes are a little skewed off in the component. So I'm using Fredo scale to adjust them. It's a great extension on the extension warehouse that you can use. Just I'm quickly adding all the different types of buildings and creating this quick little massing study. I'm going to delete that building. Didn't end up using it. And there's Tons of other buildings to choose from, but I'm going to keep going with these. Here's a quick tip. We're going to use Fredo scale again, which I'd previously mentioned. And we're going to modify the building on the corner. So I'm going to just select the building. And from Fredo scale, I'm going to do tapering with orientation of scaling box. And it lets me select the back end and just stretch it along the line. And you can see that the building, the windows themselves are all modifying and being distorted on that one side. Hit return here to make sure it's entered correctly. And I'm going to do the same thing on the back side, kind of eyeing up. I'm just eyeing how I'm lining it up here, but just to show you real quickly, quick and dirty, how you can use something like the Fredo scale. It's on the extension warehouse, the SketchUp extension warehouse. It's a great tool to uh, use. I'm going to open up the 3D warehouse and do a search for Daniel Tal. And I have a collection of different components that you can use. There are different types of bundles that you can import into the models and use. And we're going to use some pedestrian lights and some trees. And we're going to just add those really quickly just to show you how it's done to the model to give it a little bit more character. So there I'm going to place the street lights. I'm going to go back to the 3D warehouse. I'm going to type in my name again. And I do it under my name because that's the best way to keep them organized and reference from different material. And then I'm going to scroll down here. There's benches, there's bollards, tables and chairs, buildings, all sorts of stuff. Just download the 2D trees I selected. I'm going to place them over here. And I use this for a lot of my projects as well. I'm going to select this tree and cut it out of this overall group of vegetation. I'm going to paste it in my model. I'm going to copy it on both sides. I'm going to select them and I'm going to copy them down the street and I'm going to use the move tool to do that but I'm going to use the move copy array command to do that. I'm going to subdivide it by 8 or 9 or 12 and get the trees to subdivide and paste in between. And I'm going to go do the same thing with these pedestrian lights. I'm going to go hunt here over here. I'm pointing my cursor on where I want to get navigate. That's how SketchUp best lets you move through a model. I'm going to select that street light. I'm going to kind of lazily place it on both sides here. 
place it, I'm gonna rotate it using the move, copy, rotate option. I'm gonna copy it over it and I'm gonna use the scale command to invert it. So scale and then I'm gonna push it in and type in minus one and then place it. I'm gonna select both of them. And the same thing with the trees. I'm just gonna copy them all the way down and I'm gonna use the move, copy, subdivide option to place them. And you can find more information about that on the danieltal.com basic tutorial site that comes with placemaker as well and so it's the building bundle in the streets and we have a we have a city that we just built pretty quickly you can make some nice images and exports from these different conceptual models different color and shadows and I'm going to produce some more of these types of tutorials in the future, really showing how to modify and work with all the different tools that come with Placemaker. So you can actually quickly model and edit these locations to suit your needs. Lots of different ways to use the tool. There's also the tour function in Placemaker. There's some videos on that as well that will actually show you some street views from your location in Placemaker. Thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments below.